Okay, hello, and welcome to week five. And week five, we take uh, on kind of another baby step into some of the things that you can do with Modeler. And these, again, are the basic building blocks of the 3D universe and of uh, uh, basically uh, the process of crafting uh, 3D objects, which you can use in a multiple uh, in, in multiple settings. And uh, I'm hoping that this will dovetail nicely with what we've already talked about so that you'll be able to do some interesting stuff. And so today I'm going to introduce a new tool, uh, something that uh, I don't think we've really, uh, uh, really seen anything quite like it uh, at this point in the course. And I think it's important that you take a look at it. So what we're going to talk about is the bevel tool and creating intricately curved objects. And uh, these can be very useful because, uh, honestly, if all you were using was the box tool, even with uh, its characteristics, you're going to find that there's some things that, uh, that maybe you want to do that you can't do. And I will say up front that one of the hardest things to do in the 3D universe is intricately curved shapes, you know, organic shapes, you know, things that look like they're alive. That's very difficult to do in 3D graphics, and it takes some work. But fortunately, it is possible, in fact, to do these things. And so this will take you one step closer uh, to becoming proficient at it. Okay, growing curvature. That's important that we understand growing because it, it may start with a primitive, but the, uh, the primitives only take you so far. There's only so much you can do with a box. There's only so much you can do with a ball. There's only so much you can do with a disc uh, until you understand that you don't necessarily have to see the object in the primitive right away. You can see the object, or you can see the primitive as a way of getting to the object. And so, with that in mind, angular shapes are easy. Angular shapes have very little geometry. Basically, a box only has six sides, and those are generally six planes. Now, you can add geometry to the corners to give it a curve. You can even add geometry to the planes as so that instead of six planes, maybe you've got 12, or you know, multiples of that, so that you can figure out ways of introducing curvature later. Uh, but it's not necessarily always going to be easy. And we're going to show you some of these things. It may take more than one lecture to get through them. Now, spheres and curved shapes are still made out of flat planes. It's important to remind you of that, meaning that if you think of a mirror ball, I know that uh, I wasn't alive to see the 1940s and the USO and the dancing with the mirror ball, you know, that ball that's on the ceiling with the light coming off it. And I know that there have been, you know, there have been revivals of that sort of thing. But the mirror ball is really what, uh, what the sphere is in the graphic world, meaning that uh, you don't necessarily in computer graphics have a, a completely smooth sphere. In theory, that should be possible, but in practice, it is not. Uh, the, the ball that you create in Lightweight Modeler is going to be a series of planes that are equidistant from a central point, and they're curved to match this. So it basically sculpts the image of a ball. It looks more like the front of a zeppelin uh, when it's uh, when it's got relative little geometry. Now you can make those planes smaller, and if you make them small enough, eventually it will be indistinguishable from a, an actual ball, which uh, obviously is a good thing. Now on the other hand, I'm going to warn you in advance: if you try to do that right off the bat you're going to get an object which has enormous amounts of geometry and will take computer resources, meaning that the computer is going to have a hard time keeping track of all that uh, if you go too far. Now, I'm not saying not to do it. Sometimes you have to. But you expect longer render times, expect longer calculating times uh, if you're adding more geometry. And that's even true with these computers. Okay, more planes per unit equals more of a curve. Uh, primitives allow for the creation of extra geometry. So meaning that you've got, your, um, you've got your box tool, and you can tell it to create that radius that gives little curved, curved edges there. That's a great thing to do. Uh, but now for something entirely different. This is something that is not evident going into it. This is something you've got to envision, uh, but it really opens up another world. And that is called the bevel tool, uh, otherwise known as the extrude tool. Now, I'm going to back up for a second here and say that bevel and extrude really are going to do the same thing. If you have an extrude, for example, let's say, let's say you've got a box or something like this. It's a piece of soap. 
And let's say you take this particular polygon and pull it out. You would get a longer bar of soap, let's say. Uh, or you could, uh, you could do something else. But uh, ideally, if you're starting with like a, a two-dimensional plane, you're basically creating something three-dimensional out of a two-dimensional. And that's what Extrude does. It creates 3D out of 2D. And you get to decide uh, which angle to use. And we'll talk about that in a minute also. Now, uh, you take a flat polygon and you pull it along its axis. And so with that, you can actually do quite a bit. Now, Bevel does the same thing, but uh, the Bevel tool in Modeler, at least, I'm not talking about all Bevel tools or all programs, but the Bevel tool in Modeler is the best way I know of doing it uh, kind of in a user-friendly fashion, creating complex geometry that allows you to do things like bend and stretch and twist and stuff like that. And you'll see what I mean very quickly. And right-clicking versus left-clicking, meaning that you left-click and you pull and you're creating some geometry. Then you right-click, you stop. And then you left-click again, you pull again. Now you get another piece of geometry that you can do something else with. Because if you want to make a curved object like something that, like a vase, for example, it can't just you can't just extrude that once. You've got to extrude it multiple times uh, to create the curve. And I'll show you what that looks like. And the more segments, the more opportunities for curvature. Now you can make elegant shapes. You know, discs become wine glasses, for example. I'm going to put up a uh, tutorial which shows you how to make a wine glass. In fact, it shows you how to make a complete scene. Uh, with a wine glass and a bottle and stuff like that. And uh, it's actually very easy to do once you get started. And once you know how to do it, then basically it's easy. And, and you can create all kinds of these things. And you can create inner surfaces. You can create hollow objects by, by going back down inside and putting out the middle parts. And you can create coils and curves and all kinds of things. And then, of course, you can build your scene. So what I'm going to ask you to do for this next assignment is to make a scene. Make something that looks relatively real, that uses some of these tools. And that's what I want you to do. Now, what we're going to do next in this exercise is I'm going to demonstrate how you can use the bevel tool to get started doing some very useful stuff. And we're going to create a scene or at least start to create it, and I may have to continue in another lecture depending on how carried away I get, but we'll, we'll, we'll start to have some fun. Okay, so here we are in Modeler, and what I want to do is I want to get a little bit ambitious. I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to make it, uh, uh, make it fun and friendly, but at the same time interesting. And so I want to make a chessboard. How about that? I want to make a scene with a chess set. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over my creatives. I'm going to make the board itself. And I'm going to show you that the board itself does not have to be all that difficult to create. So this will be part of the scene. So we're going to work at this backwards, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go to my box tool, and I am going to go ahead and make a nice big box. And I'm going to make this uh, rather large, let's say. And I'm just going to tell you in advance that I love chess. I love chess. And so there's my chess board, and I'm going to make it a nice marble chess board, so I'm going to give it that shape. Now, looking at this, uh, I'm going to tell you, as someone who actually tried to make a chess board out of pieces of wood, it's not as easy as you might think to get it right. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a shortcut. Unless you take a shortcut, this can be a very difficult procedure. So I'm going to take my, uh, my numeric tool here, and you can see I'm looking down at it right here. So I'm leaving box on. And first of all, I'm going to start by looking at, at these values here. Now I got 38 meters by 28.6 meter or 38 meters. I'm going to round that up to 40. Oh, my little number lock tool wasn't that. 40, 40 meters, okay. And then I'm going to take my depth because that's what it sees this as and I put that also at 40 meters. And so that gives me a perfect square. And so we know we've got that right. Now, um, in this particular case, I am not going to, well, let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to give it some of that radius on the edge. Let's say give it that much and maybe just a hint of geometry there. This is not going to be a big part of what we're doing. And so we've got kind of a very gentle edge there, as would normally be the case, because you really don't want a razor sharp surface unless you're making a razor. And so 
Now we got one massive square here, one massive square. So let's see if we can change that a little bit. And I'm also going to center this, even though it's not a huge part of what we're going to do here. I'm going to center the whole thing. Won't change anything else we do. But here we've got uh, we've got our, our square board and these, this upper, the, 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 the height of it doesn't really matter, but we'll leave it around there. So let's see what happens when we change the segments. Now, suddenly, now here's a question. How many squares do we want on this board? Well, one, two, three, four, five. So we need more than that. We need eight squares. So I'm going to keep on adding segments. But I actually want more than eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's, that's the ideally where I want it to be, but I'm going to add two more because I want to create a border. So I'll just keep going. Oh, what do I do? I'll just keep going. Boom, boom. Okay, so there I've got 10 segments, and I'm going to go ahead and, well, first of all, I don't necessarily want any vertical segments there. So I'm going to add the segments here. So I'll add 10 segments all together. And so the way that's going to work is you're going to have these segments here form the chessboard, and the segments on the outer part are just going to be one big border. And so I'm going to do it the easy way. I'm going to leave it pretty much right like that. And that is going to be my uh, chessboard. And so I am going to turn off box. And so I got a chessboard. And you're going to say, well, this looks like a slab of concrete to me. And yeah, it should. So I'm going to save this object. And I'm going to put this into week five. And I'm going to call this chess. And so then if I go into layout and I'm going to uh, put this into perspective view so we can see that's our studio here and I am going to load my object and I'm going to load chess and suddenly boom there it is. Okay so there's my chess set and so if I come out of here I can see the, the camera and everything I am just going to look at it like this for now because I really don't need to see all the details. But you can see that beautiful little uh, rounded edge there that's really going to work. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go back to Modeler. And the first thing I'm going to do is I want to create those. Uh, I want to create, first of all, what the, what the, uh, the, the chess piece itself is going to be, what the color is going to be. So I'm going to go into Polygon mode. And I am going to uh, basically select all of the squares that are bordering the chess set. Just the border shapes. There we go. And that will actually include, well, actually it doesn't include the edges. And so I'm going to want to do that too. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold down the shift key. And I'm going to select those as well. Oops, made a mistake. But I got, uh, well, actually I got all of them. So I'm going to deselect all of the squares that are actually the playing squares. And so there, if I'm looking at this correctly, and I may not be, everything but the playing squares is going to be selected. So then I'm going to go, just one more look, yeah, it looks like we're all right. I'm going to go to my change surface, and I'm going to call this edge. So that is going to be my edge color. I'm not going to bother changing the color. And so then I just got myself in trouble. I have to refer to something now. Okay, so here I am. I'm looking at a chessboard. I just want to make sure that I'm matching reality here. It's probably worked no matter how I do it. Well, I'm going to start with a white square on top there, going white, black, white, black, white, black, etc., and white going down there. And that's really all I need to see. So if I go here, first of all, I'm going to deselect all of these polygons. And so I know that this square up here has to be white. So that much is, is understood. And so therefore, that would be a black square. This would be a white square. That would be a black square. This would be a white square. So hold on the shift key. And this would be a white square also. 
and that wouldn't be a square at all, so the next white square would be here. So that's a white square. This, this is a white square, but that isn't. This is a white square, but that isn't. This is a white square, but that isn't. I'm not saying this is easy, by the way. So this would be another white square, but that isn't. Oop, maybe there's that. Oop. Get this right. And this would be a white square, but that isn't. This would be a white square, but that isn't. This would be a white square, but that isn't. And then we're down to this square. And this one, 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 and this one. And this one, 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 and this one. Finally getting the edge of the board here. And that one, turn that one off, and that one, and that one. Okay, so I think we finally got it. Now then, I'm also, even though that's not really necessary, I am going to turn off every square that's on the bottom of the board because we really don't care about the bottom of the board. And so I am going to change surface and I am going to say white. And I could, now I have a choice here, and it's important that you know that it is a choice, I could go through and name all the black squares too. I could do the same thing and that would be fine. In fact, I'm going to do that and I'm gonna pretend, I'm gonna do that now and you won't have to watch it. Okay, so there we are, I did it. And so what I was gonna suggest we do is that we just have the default color be whatever the edge color was. But I wanna be a little bit more creative than that. If I limit myself there, I can, uh, I'm not always gonna be keeping myself. So there we go. So I'm gonna save this, save the object, uh, then we're going to go back into layout and notice nothing has changed. And so here's where we get to have some fun. I go to my surface editor and you see, I'm going to start with my edge. What do I want for my edge? And so right now I'm just going to go with, uh, I'm just going to go with, with anything. Let, let's, let's make that a blue edge. And so the edge is going to be blue. And so let's say I go with my white squares and I choose to make uh, make that, uh, let's say, say yellow for some strange reason. And let's say for my black, I will make that black. And so there, I've got my chest set. Isn't that something? All right, so let's basically stop here for a second and figure out what it is we really want to do with this. So uh, it's important that you understand that you now suddenly have basically unlimited possibilities. So I'm going to put this into VPR, Virtual Progressive Render. And so that means that we're seeing this as it is. And so I want to make a beautiful marble chess set. That's what I want to do. And so I am going to go to the internet, which is right here. And I'm already on chess sets here. So I am just going to go turn this off. And I'm going to show you how easy this is. I'm going to say marble surface. And when I do that, I get this. Okay, so it's showing me a lot of white marble, but it's, I'm going to choose uh, a, nice, a nice dark marble for my black. Now that's got, uh, it's got a watermark on it. Now let's see if I can find one without a watermark. There's one without a watermark. And so I am going to save that image. And I am going to put that into week five. And I'm just going to call that black underscore marble. And then I'm going to go to this white surface and I'm going to save that image. And that's going to be white underscore marble. 
And let's say that I want an edge color that will go along with that. I'm going to go with whatever else I can find here. It doesn't necessarily, the color itself doesn't matter, but I want to do something interesting. So what about if I were to go something like this? And that would be kind of like a neutral. So I'm going to save that image as, I'm just going to call it edge. Now let's say we've done that. And let's say we go back here for a second, back to our chest set. Now notice how it's basically got this, uh, this kind of a generic look. So I'm going to go to the edge and I am going to go to my texture button here. So the color is blue. I'm going to go to texture. I'm going to use an image map. Now in this case, this is a three-dimensional object, and so that has got to be a cubic, not planar, but cubic. And I'm going to load the image, and I'm going to load the edge image. And when I do that, it's going to look like crap. And so I'm going to tell it to do auto sizing. And so then this now looks like a nice piece of marble. How about that? And so then I'm going to use that texture. Now, if I go to my black and I go here, basically the same thing, except here I'm going to leave it plainer because the black squares are not really three-dimensional shapes. And I'm going to load the image of the black marble. And it's in there. I'm just going to do auto sizing. And uh, there, you notice there's a little bit of a problem. It's stretched. There's something wrong with it. So if I try the different axes, Part of it's because we may have a defective surface here. Now here is the problem. The image comes with a name tag. Now, it is against copyright laws for me to use this image without providing some attribution or, um, or some sort of uh, uh, permit, getting some sort of permission. Because they have put that watermark there, I'm going to respect that. And I'm just going to look for another black marble because I didn't notice that they had done that. Uh, so let's say that I go for this one. Uh, that one, maybe not quite perfect, but let's give that one a shot. So I'm going to save that image, and I'm going to call that Black Marble 2. And if I hit Save, then if I look at Black Marble 2, Black Marble 2 does not have a watermark, so that is a free surface. So I'm simply going to change Black Marble, I'll load another color, and load Black Marble 2, so Black Marble 2 now has that stretched look. So if I change the axis, notice how Z wouldn't work either. If I'm doing it planar, I have to find the axis that the image would be on. So if I'm putting it on a different axis, I'm literally looking at it sideways. So here, my Black Marble is in all of those squares. And so uh, if I hit Automatic Sizing, I guess I already did that. So I'm going to use that texture. And if I go to White, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to uh, to choose planar. Oh, I think I did something wrong. That's edge. I meant to go to white. So if I go to whites, I'm going to grab the image of the white marble, and the white marble. I will look at these, make sure I get it right. I think that that's the correct one. So if I hit resize, let's check these others. Actually, no, that looks right. That looks wrong, that looks right. This looks like the best interpretation. So I'm going to use that texture. And now suddenly I've got a relatively snazzy looking chess set. And so I am going to uh, go back to the edge and uh, look at it again. So I'm going to add some specularity, give it a nice, uh, nice specular surface, give it a little bit of glossiness, that nice marble look. And I can even add some reflection, not that there's anything to reflect right now. And so we'll start with that. Now, if I go to my black, I can also add some specularity there. I want to make that 100% specular. Now, I can also, I can kick up the illumination if I want to see what it would look like. Kind of like taking an x-ray of it, but I'm going to leave it alone for now. I'm just going to let the texture do its work, and I'm going to put some reflection on there as well. And it's look, going to look really nice when we put the chest uh, figures on there. And then if I go to my white, 
Uh, I can do the same thing, specularity, glossiness, and reflection. And so there we will have the makings of that chess table. How's that? And so at this point, I am going to save this, save scene, because now I'm saving it as a scene. Now the reason why that's important is because this scene, I now can control certain things about it. First of all, I have a base object, which is my chess table. And if I look down here, that is literally the only thing on there. There's one object, which is the chess table. And in this particular case, I could build the pieces onto the table, but I'd rather not, you know, just for demonstration purposes, because I want the pieces to be able to be manipulated. Okay, so if I'm back here, this is my chess table once again. This time what I'm going to do is I am going to go to a, uh, a new object. I'm going to make a new object, start from scratch. Only one layer. Now, I could have done this in another layer, but I'm going to eliminate some of that excess confusion because I don't want to have to worry about placing the pieces in exactly the right place, even though that might be a good idea. I want to demonstrate first how one goes about making them. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to make a pawn. Now, fortunately, a pawn is a very easy image to make. So, for example, a pawn is a circular shape on the bottom. So we'll start with that. I'm going to make a disc. So I'm going to do like that. And this will be a very thin disc. And that's as far as I'm going to go with the primitive. And so if I go to my numeric pad, I will see that I have, uh, so if I look at the radius, I got basically 7.5 by 6.5, so I'm just gonna make that 7.5, and once I do that, it will be the right shape. And then I'm just going to, uh, because I, wanna, I want this to be a universal object, I'm gonna center this completely. So now, my new pawn piece is centered. Okay, so, Let's take a look briefly at what a pawn looks like. Let's look at that one. So this is what a pawn looks like. It's basically, it's, well, it's got that kind of a beveled shape, and it can make it as complicated or as uncomplicated as you want. But this is a basic idea of what a pawn looks like. So let's go ahead and try to make that shape. And so if we wanted to do it, there's a tricky way we can do it. And uh, let's go ahead and, and try this. I'm going to right hand click on this and I'm going to save that image right into week five. Well, it's one of those web things. And so let's try this one instead because it's the same basic thing. Save image as, and that's a PNG. So I'm going to call that pawn. So if I'm back in modeler here, what I want to do is I'm going to put that image of the pawn here. So, if I hit the D button on my keyboard, that gets me to display, and I can go to Viewports. Now, I've got my top left, bottom left, you know, top right, bottom right, so it's, it's going to be the bottom left that I'm interested in. And I am going to put in a backdrop, so backdrop on the bottom left, and I'm going to load, I'm going to load an image, and I'm going to load that image. So I'm going to load that image into the bottom left, and as you can see, that it's actually there. It's just incredibly small. Fortunately, I can get away with a lot here. So I'm just going to drag this way the heck up here like that. And that's basically what I'm going to do. Maybe it doesn't have to be quite that big. And you might say, well, why am I doing that? Well, if I wanted to make that shape, this would be one way of doing it. And so just for the sake of argument, let's do it this way. So I can also... If I turn off disk and I modify move, I'm going to move this base piece down there. So what I want to do is I want to pretend that that base piece is that base piece. And I'll show you what I mean. So it's easier to see over here. What I'm going to do, turn off move. So now I've got my disk. And I'm going to go to uh, multiply. That's where the bevel tool is. But before I do that, I'm going to select only one polygon, just that, that circle. So the circle polygon is selected. 
So then if I go to bevel, watch what I can do with that. See? So I can make it fan out like that. So what I want to do is I want to match that first curve that it's got there. It's not much of a curve, but it's, it's something. And in fact, I'm going to kind of fake it a little bit. I'm going to go up a little bit there. Then I'm going to let it go. So I've got the first curve. I just released it. Then I'm going to hit the right-hand mouse button. Then I'm going to go back to the left-hand mouse button, and I'm going to do this. So let's say that I wanted to match at least part of this. So not quite the same curve, but it's close enough. Right-hand click, left-hand click. And now I'll go up here. Right-hand click, left-hand click. Go further in. Right-hand click, left-hand click. And let's say, let's say we agree up until there. Right-hand click, left-hand click. Maybe something like that. And then we'll come up here like this. And we could try to reproduce it exactly, but we don't really have to. So this will be the area where we're doing the most real work. Because we have a ball. So each time we take a little pause, we're right hand clicking and left hand clicking. And if we leave it like that, what have we got? We've got a pawn. And if we get in on this, we might want to bring that up a little bit. Okay, so just a little bit. Maybe not quite that much. And we can actually massage this later. But I'm going to turn off bevel and I'm going to release those points. And then I'm going to hit the D key again, and I'm going to go into backdrop. And in this particular case, I'm going to go to bottom left, and I'm just going to lose the backdrop. Okay, so that gives us this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, change the surface. And I'm going to call this uh, pawn. Pawn 1, because there's going to be two sets of pawns here. which could make things a little bit different. And so I'm going to save my object, and I'm going to call this pawn 1. And if you think about it, you figure out why I'm doing it this way. I'm also going to save it as pawn 2. And there's probably an easier way to do this, but we'll, we'll just do it this way for now. And if I select that surface, change surface, and I'll just call that pawn 2. And I'm just going to save that real quick. Now, if I'm over here, I'm going to load the object, load object, pawn 1. And look at that object. Look how big and huge that thing is. Well, obviously, that's not the way we're going to want it. Uh, but what I can do is I can go to Modify, the object is selected, Pawn 1 is modified, and I'm going to size that down substantially. I'm also going to move it up, and I'm temporarily going to turn off VPR, and I'm going to, oh, wrong thing. I'm going to leave the, the board where it is, but I want to move this and for now, I'm just going to move it right there. So there is the actual pawn. I'm going to make it a little smaller, like that. And so I'm going to park that right down there. And so if we got that, let's go to Virtual Progressive Render. And there's my chess piece. And if I go to my, my image, 
I can then go to that chest piece. In this case, I'm going to make it cylindrical because it basically is. I'm going to turn on, well, I'm just going to go grab my image map. And that is going to be, I will make that the, uh, the white marble. And I'll automatically size it. Since it's cylindrical, it, it should do its thing. Let's make sure it isn't doing anything weird. I think it was best that way. I'm going to use that texture. Then I'm going to turn on smoothing. And then I'm going to turn on specularity. And a little bit of glossiness. And even some reflection. And there you have it. And so the idea is I can use this technique to create the entire chessboard. So I could also then load object, choose pawn two, load that. Now this is gonna have to be handled in the same way. And obviously if I were gonna do this right, I, well, I would, I would uh, use exactly the same controls I did but let's just do it this way again for now. So I make it smaller, I move it up. And I would say that that's just about right. And so then if I go to my surface editor, I turn on smoothing and I'm going to load in this particular case, cylindrical and a black marble. And let's see, oh, that's the wrong black marble. Black marble two. And boom, and boom. I, th I think it's Y, I think it wants to be Y. We'll find out in a second. And automatic sizing, yeah, that is right. Let's try it on this one, on that one. I'm pretty sure that's where it should be. So I'm gonna use that texture and I'm going to temporarily turn up the luminosity so I can see that that's taking on the correct shape in the black marble. Turn on the specularity so it'll get those nice highlights and the glossiness a little bit and the reflection so that it should reflect part of the board in there. And so basically, there it is. So I could then move that anywhere I want on the board And that would be fine. So this is the beginnings. Of course, that would be over here if we're playing chess. And that is the beginnings of your chess board. And so there you have it. Basically, it's a relatively simple tool that allows you to do some pretty doggone amazing things. And so that's what I want you to think about. I want you to think about making some wonderful objects of your own. Uh, and it could just be this. And so the chess board could be a little environment. You could also put it on a bigger table. You can apply other things to it. And we'll talk about that more when we talk about scene building later.